When we are faithful to God's plan, communication becomes an effective expression of our responsible search for truth and our pursuit of goodness. Dear friends, as mentioned, the Universal Church today observes the 106th World Day of Migrants and Refugees. And I'm very pleased to be here at your parish because St. Anne's community has always demonstrated a heart for refugees, provided a welcomed home, and have greatly supported our diocesan Catholic charities, migration, and refugee services, for which I am so grateful. And present with us today is the president and CEO of our Catholic charities, Art Bennett, and members of his team. And together, we express our thanks uh, to all of you. The theme that Pope Francis chose for to this year's observance is this, forced like Jesus to flee. Mary and Joseph, like millions of internally displaced persons, had to take Jesus, flee from home, because it was unsafe due to the threats of hurried. And Pope Francis has asked us to reflect on that image today. Think about it. The Holy Family experienced the same fate of so many refugees. And sadly, millions throughout the world can identify with that reality. They have to flee from home because of war and danger, hunger and violence, and other grave dangers. In order to find security and a dignified life for themselves and for their families. And as Pope Francis reminds us, this process is even more complicated in light of a global pandemic. Today, I think we are reminded of something we can easily forget, that all of us, no matter our background, no matter our creed, are created in the image and likeness of God. We are all members of God's holy family and must treat each other with such dignity and respect. And so today, as a church, and as a diocese, we not only renew our commitment to pray for migrants and refugees, but to do our part in welcoming, protecting, promoting, and integrating inter internally displaced persons. And how blessed we are to know that actually what we do for them we do for Christ himself. Because of the generosity of the faithful, Catholic charities in the Diocese of Arlington and Richmond provide the most amount of service for migrants and refugees. And we know why we do so. They are our brothers and sisters. Here in this parish and in parishes throughout the Commonwealth, we find ways to acknowledge and welcome and embrace migrants and refugees. As we listen to their stories, as I will do later today, as we acknowledge their contributions, as we provide food and housing and working opportunity and educational resources. When you think about it, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to serve in such a way in imitation of Christ himself. And today's readings, dear friends, they tell us what that commitment look like, looks like. 
In the words of the prophet Ezekiel, we are always called to do what is right and just. And as St. Paul encourages us to make sure we have the same attitude in Christ Jesus. The gospel also provides a strict warning. It's a parable. And our attention is focused on that second son who received an invitation to go to work in the vineyard. And he enthusiastically said, yes, I accept this invitation. But the sad part is, he never showed up. Each day, the Lord invites us to work, to work in his vineyard. And we want to say yes. And we know what it involves. Loving our neighbor as ourselves, welcoming the stranger in our midst, caring for the poor and marginalized, the migrants and the refugees. We're enthusiastic in offering our yes. But today, as you receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, or make a spiritual communion as you participate virtually, pray for the grace, the grace we all need, to make sure that our yes means yes, that we mean what we say, and we do what we promise, so that we are known always for doing what is right and just, and in having the same attitude in Christ Jesus. As we seek to love and to serve others, and always for the greater glory of the Lord our God, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.